finishing a great day in the Santinez Valley with a wine tasting, and I'm really looking forward to checking out Lucas and Llewellyn's tasting room here in Solvang. But before we head there, Louis Lucas has invited me to visit his beautiful vineyard and learn about the winemaking process. Louis, thank you so much for having us out. It's a beautiful spot. Tell us how long you've been here. What started it all? Well, this particular spot we bought 22 years ago, and it was vineyard at the time. Okay. But we made some, you know, a few improvements and changed the varieties around and, and uh, discovered that this is a little bit of Bordeaux in California right here. Ah, right on. And uh, I understand this is actually your 50th year with uh, working with wine. Well, it's my 50th year that I've been in Santa Barbara County. I came to Santa Barbara County in 1970, planted, well, I actually planted my first vine in May of 1970. And believe it or not, 50 years have gone by. My goodness, yeah. You know. Tell us about Lucas and Llewellyn and how it all started. Well, it took a good friend, Judge Llewellyn, who joined me in business uh, 22 years ago. And prior to that, I had been in the area, and Royce, of course, was, uh, became a retired judge. Along the way, uh, the opportunity came. Uh, uh, Royce was interested, and, and we formed Lucas and Llewellyn in uh, 1996. 1996. 1996. And just for, again, for the folks at home, uh, it is February. Uh, that's why you're seeing the, the vines in a dormant state. What comes next after this? Uh... Well, they've been pruned. They need to be tied. Yeah. Uh, we pruned uh, up on the hills. We pruned a little early because it doesn't get as cold in the spring. So these have been pruned. And you'll see these things sticking up behind you are canes. This is a cane pruned vineyard, two canes per vine with about four or five spurs. Each one has a couple buds. And this is Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc. Uh, interesting Cabernet Franc. It just got a double gold at the uh, Chronicle Tasting in San Francisco from this vineyard. Oh, congratulations. So, hey. <laughs> that is really cool. How much total acreage do you have overall under Lucas and Llewellyn? Approximately 400 acres. 400 acres. Well, I'm looking forward to trying some of your wines. Why don't we head over to the tasting room and try them out? I'm always ready for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're now in your tasting room, a beautiful space. Uh, how long has the tasting room been here? 18 or 19 years. 18 or 19 years. You've seen a lot of changes, right? And the Lucas and Llewellyn's tasting room is right in the middle of Solvang. As, as we all know from watching the series now, it's in the heart of the Santinez Valley, Danish capital of America. Uh, what kind of customers do you see in here, Louis? <laughs> from all over the world. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's the unexpected. And, uh, the other thing that you see is a lot of nice people. And I think that goes with wine. Little culture, little history, enjoyment, friendship, all the good things. Well, what are we gonna start off with here? All right, well, this is a reason to celebrate. Absolutely, this what is, isn't? <laughs> we are supposed to call it sparkling wine, but it's champagne, or we can call it champagne style. Uh, but no, this is our sparkling wine. And it's, uh, this one is, uh, this particular one is 50% uh, Chardonnay, 50% Pinot Noir. Picked on the same day and we co-ferment. We put the juices together, ferment them together, and then we take them through the champagne process. We don't release it until it's at least two years old. You know, we let, let it lay there in, in tirage. And we, and we make some specialty uh, champagnes. I make one with a splash of cognac and we let it sit for four years before we do that, so. Mm. What do we have next? Next, Pinot Noir. Of course, Pinot Noir, since the movie, sideways, <laughs> is uh, the big thing in Santa Barbara County. Right. And uh, we have three of the best growing areas for Pinot. Uh, uh, Los, uh, Los Alamos and Santa Maria and uh, Santa Rita Hills. I mean, three, three great places to grow Pinot in the county. And, and of course, Pinot has become a, a mainstay in the business. Acreage has doubled and, and uh, it's mm, one of the favorites. It smells good. Our high, our high Nine Pinot, we call it High Nine because we have the nine acres up on top of this hill. 
had never been planted in anything before. And uh, I mentioned the Royce about 20 years ago. I, you know, I'd like to plant that hill, Royce. And he said, why don't you? And so I planted it. And uh, it ended up being, it produced our best Pinot. And then this is the uh, Cab Franc where we right. were earlier This is today. what we talked about, yeah. the double gold at the Chronicle Tasting. Oh. And this is Cabernet Franc, 100%. Uh, it has a dryness to it that, um, uh, wh whether it be uh, dried herb, to me it's organic. And the, the other thing uh, with Cabernet Franc is, you know, it's one of the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. Which, uh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean, parents? Cabernet Franc was an existing variety, and we sort of they sort of made it with Sauvignon Blanc, white wine, and the offspring was Cabernet Sauvignon, one of the great varieties ever. Ah. So uh, it's interesting that it uh, played that role. Yeah, Cabernet Franc did, but as a little this unique char I keep wanting to talk about this unique character that it has. And it, it doesn't pass that character. It does in, in, a, in a different way. It passes it to Cabernet Sauvignon. But um, as a result, it's become uh, now a, pop, a more, more popular variety. Absolutely. And, and, it, uh, yeah. and uh, it does really well. And of course, this is in my yard. Those are the most pampered grapes we have. <laughs> you know, I, uh, they uh, can't ignore me. Yeah, <laughs> you see what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's got a, a, just a beautiful smoky spice to it. Spicy? It? Yeah, a clean finish. Okay. And then? And then last but not least is Cote del Sol. This was a, a wine that uh, I got the idea on a trip to Australia. I was at, I don't know why I mentioned Penfolds, but I will. And uh, they, they, they poured me a Cabernet with a little bit of Syrah in it. So I made a little mental note, and, and I said, someday maybe I ought to do that. So when I got back, this is like 12 or 15 years ago, I uh, made a 8% uh, Syrah, 92% Cabernet. And, but what I did that was different is I picked it on the same day and fermented it together. I love co-fermentation because you get something that you can't blend to. Mm. So if it's really good, it's unique. If it's bad, you try again. <laughs> but this one really worked. And so uh, it got the name Cote del Sol because I had another idea. We were harvesting the grapes and I have it on this, uh, it's not an arbor, but it's a cross arm. And I take the, can uh, the vine up and I split the canopy. So on this vine, I only pick the sun side of the vine. Mm. Why? Because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> but no, really, it, uh, uh, Dan Gears, our winemaker here at that time, he and I were playing with a Cabernet and we're looking at it. And what was interesting was that the sun side was different than the, the morning sun side. And so ever since that time, I still pick the sides separately. Um, if you give the other side uh, another 10 or 12 days, it makes a unique, terrific wine. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's what we learned along along the way, and it's been one of the favorite wines that we do. Thank you again for sharing everything with us today. It has a richness to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Just yeah. it's good. Anyway, like a steak unto itself. Yeah. Louis, how can folks find out more about Lucas and the Wellen? Well, besides coming to Solvang, yes, we have a website, llwine.com. Kind of simple, and. Um, of course, uh, we hope to be in stores and restaurants and that kind of things. We are working on that more and more. What we do is personal. Yeah. All these wines and the vines, you saw the vines. Absolutely. You know, we're, uh, it's us. It's a example of us. Yeah. Well, cheers. And, cheers. Uh, thank you again. Lucas in the Welland. <laughs>